Hey guys, this is the next video in the series, Becoming Well Read. The last video was Carrie by Stephen King, and so I decided to read The Giver now by Lewis Laurie. The Giver was very different, written for a different uh, type of person, for a young adult, and I am an older adult, I'm 31. I've read this book a long time ago, I reread it, and it's about a society that's very different than our society. So I just want to talk about a little bit about how they lived in this book. One of the first things in this book that you notice is that everything is ordained sort of by the government or by the ruling body. The things you can do, the things you can't do. There are strict guidelines uh, in the schools, what the kids learn. And then they're sort of allowed to like explore and do jobs on their own. And when they graduate, they're given jobs and everybody is assigned a job. Everybody has a purpose. Uh, even the amount of children born, the number of kids are dictated and they're given to specific adults who apply for children. And even your spouse is dictated. And so nobody really has kids. There are specific people in society to have kids. Everything is ordained and dictated by the government. Scary, right? But it seems like the people in this book really don't mind. They don't know what they're missing. It's sort of an ignorance is bliss mentality that left me wondering, could this work? Could this type of society work? The book also had a very interesting sort of societal structure uh, where there weren't really many laws broken. People didn't go out and break the laws the way they did now. It seems like when they have enough to live on, enough food, a place to live, they're actually law-abiding citizens and there's really no need to break a law there's no aggression there's no craziness happening and part of it is due to the pill now you get this pill when you start having stirrings or feelings very strong emotions usually feelings of love or interest or lust for another person but what they do is they dull down your emotions and they're everybody takes them males females doesn't matter and this might seem like a horrible horrible thing but if it gets rid of the, you know, crime and th things that are like crazy in society, then it might be a good thing. It, one thing I fear is that it also might uh, interfere with people's creativity, uh, which is a bad thing. In the society, it seems like people are not really allowed to be as individual as you would like. There is a high value in, how do you say, in being exact, in being exact in everything you say. And so, if you say, I'm starving, well, no, nobody's ever starving. They will pull you to the side and, like, you mean, you know, maybe you have a bit of an appetite, but you're not starving because nobody in society is starving. And so pe the, the kids, they're taught very on to be exact. And uh, certain words don't seem to be as much in use as they used to be. Words like love. In this book, the giver has a very important job. He carries the burden of history on him. He reads books he knows the way society was before and he carries sort of the memories of the way society was before with him because they were passed down from one giver to the next and uh then there's this little boy chosen to be the next giver to receive uh these memories and that's where it gets a little bit supernatural and unbelievable the giver puts his hands on the boy uh, on his back and sort of imparts memories. I remember one of the memories is the memory of snow and sledding and but also the memory of war and pain and the kid he sort of can't handle it. There was another person who was receiving these things before uh, the main character in this book. They couldn't handle it and they asked to be released. The people in society don't really understand release. They think people go somewhere but that's not how it works. It, it is death. But this society doesn't seem to understand death. They never see death. They, they don't understand that to die means not to live anymore. Even the old people, uh, they get released after a certain age. And they're cared for, yes, uh, in their old age. There is security. But it's very strange the way this book deals with it. Uh, long story short, the new person who is receiving can't handle it, decides to run away. There's a baby that's going to be released because he's a twin. And no, yo, we can't have that in this society. Um, and at the end of the book, he's run away with this baby. And it's sort of an open ending. You don't know really if they die or if it's a hopeful ending because he sees like the houses in the distance and he's going to it. He's like walked for days and days and they were hungry and cold. And he sees the house and this warmth and it's sort of like 
it looks like a memory that he might have received from the giver. Something that was, you know, passed down to him of warmth and love. Yeah, it's kind of open-ended. You could take it as he died, but then he went to heaven. Or he really did find his salvation, or he was hallucinating, and that's how the book ends. Really open-ending. What do you think about The Giver? Have you ever read this book? Do you think it's a good book uh, to recommend to others? Story-wise, I really liked it. Uh, the prose was, again, for younger readers. It is interesting to think about uh, the things that this book puts forward and to dwell, dwell upon them and to dwell upon our society. In any case, that is The Giver by Lois Lowry. And the next book I will be reviewing or talking about here on this channel is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. Now, this book, I've actually already read it. I have, like, a few books that I've read. And so, hopefully, I'll make this video for Salem's Lot sometime this week. And I'll try to catch up. I've also read Rage uh, by Stephen King or, or Richard Bachman, if you prefer to use his pseudonym that he wrote it under. Look out for uh, Stephen King's Salem Lot. Very appropriate for October, by the way. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Ciao.